Hello, uh, welcome back. We are now into the 27th lecture of this course, almost going towards the half of uh, the course. So let me start sharing my slides uh, straight away and we are going to continue doing uh, numerical integration, but uh, we are going into a different territory today. Um, so let's see um, what we are going to do. So the question is, what next? in numerical integration because what we have done is that we have learned some good numerical methods to compute definite integrals so they include the trapezoidal methods the simpson's rules or in general the newton quotes formulae and then we have learned some composite rules to learn uh, to compute the definite integrals after that we learned about this very amazing method of adaptive quadratures where we can make the integral uh, less than uh, where we can approximate this integral by a sum with a proper uh, with the um, pre prescribed uh, accuracy and finally the icing on the cake is the gaussian quadrature method so these are the very nice methods that we have learned using our uh, polynomial approximations polynomial interpolations and finally, Gaussian quadrature method, which is a really brilliant method. And the question is now, what do we do next? And what we are going to do is that we will out venture outside our one dimensional realm. So indeed, that's right. So what we are going to do is that we are going to do multiple integrals using our numerical techniques. So that's what we are going to do. So what we are going to evaluate are the double integrals to start with over some region r the function f x y is defined over this region and d a is the area element okay and the region we start with is a rectangular region so of course you know very well that uh, the area over a general region is obtained as a limit of these rectangle uh, the integration over these rectangular regions but we will not go into too much generality. We will consider only these rectangular regions to begin with. Okay. So what we then have is that this double integral over the region R is basically you can separate the variables and you have integral A to B with respect to X of a function of X, which is the integral C to D F of X, Y with respect to Y. So we have this integral c to d fxy dy and since you are integrating with respect to y it becomes now a function of x and you can integrate this function of x with respect to x or from a to b. This is what we are going to do. So we use the composite trapezoidal rule to begin with and let's see how it looks like. So what we are going to do is that we take d minus c by 2 and d minus a by 2. So we are not going to take too many midpoints, we too many points from A to B and C to D. We are just going to take one point in between. So in all, we in the rectangular region, we are going to have nine points. Okay, so if you consider the rectangular region like A comma B cross C comma D, then there are these four corner points, four midpoints of the sides, and then there is the central point. So those are the nine points that we are going to have. Then our composite trapezoidal uh, rule, what we will do is that we will integrate the inside function first. So we understand that we have the double integration is basically integration from A to B of a function of X. And that function of X is obtained by integrating the F of X, Y with respect to Y first. So we will apply this multiple trapezoidal rule to this function of uh, uh, F of X, Y keeping X constant. And this is our composite trapezoidal rule. So we have f of x comma c, f of x comma d. And then the midpoint, which is f of x comma c plus d, will come with multiplicity 2. And outside we have k by 2. So this is the approximate answer. Now we need to integrate the left hand side with respect to a with respect to x from a to b, which means that each of these three summands, namely f of x comma c f of x comma d and f of x comma c plus d by 2. These three functions are going to be integrated from a to b. But we are again going to use the 
मल्टीपल ट्रेपेजॉइडल रूल द कंपोजिट ट्रेपेजॉइडल रूल सो अल्टीमेटली वॉट वी गेट इज दिस इंटीग्रल ए टू बी d minus c by 4 and then you have this function as it is the function between the two square brackets the final answer then is so this d minus c by 4 which is simply k by 2 there is a b minus a by 4 also comes out so you have b minus a into d minus c upon 16 that is outside f of x comma c now the trapezoidal rule will give you f of a comma c f of b comma c and then a plus b by 2 comma c will come with multiplicity too so we are going to bring all the uh, function values of same coefficient together and so we have these nine values so what we have is we have a f of a comma c a comma d b comma c b comma d these are the four corner points where do we get a comma c and a comma d a comma c and a comma d are obtained by integrating this then b comma c and b comma d e uh, sorry so f of a comma c and b comma c is obtained by integrating f of x comma c and this a comma d and b comma d this is obtained by integrating x comma d the function with respect to x um we are keeping the second variable constant d and then this c plus d by 2 that will have again three terms namely a plus b by 2 c plus d by 2 a c plus d by 2 and b c plus d by 2 but this the middle one a plus b by 2 c plus d, d by 2 will come with uh, coefficient 4 because already the f of x comma c plus d by 2 has come with coefficient 2 and then when you again take the midpoint with respect to x you are going to multiply to that by the uh, number 2 so there you get the coefficient to be 4 and this x comma c already gives you this a plus b by 2 comma c as the midpoint and f of x comma d gives you this remaining midpoint which is a plus b by 2 comma d. so this is very simple the only problem with this is that so you may actually imagine this as the particular rectangle the corners are coming with multiplicity is 1 the midpoints are coming with multiplicities 2 and the central point is coming with multiplicity 4 this is when we are only taking 2 so we we have divided a to b into the, we have taken only uh, x0 x1 and x2 and say y0 y1 and y2 those are the only intervals the so two interval sub intervals on each side are taken at this moment if you take more intervals then the number of function values increases so the procedure is actually quite straight forward here but the number of function evaluations will be actually the square of the number of function evaluations which you need for a single integral right because it's a it's essentially product of the number of sub intervals okay so it's going to be the square in a practical situation we will not use such an elementary method we have seen that the simpson's rule gives better approximation than the trapezoidal rule because trapezoidal rule is basically looking at straight lines connecting for each of these sub intervals but we are going to use the composite simpson's rule where you have each interval divided into even number of uh, sub intervals and then we take two intervals at a time and apply the simpson's rule to those consecutive two intervals so what we do is that we will employ the composite simpson's rule which is the one third rule to begin with to give the illustration of the general approximation technique but of course any other composite formula could be used in its place okay so what we do is that we divide the region r by partitioning both the sides ab and cd into an even number of sub intervals so let me just give some notations we have even number n and m and ab is partitioned as x0 x1 up to xn there are remember the number of intervals is even the number of points the nodes those are going to be odd n plus 1 but the number of sub intervals those are even that's even and cd is now divided into y0 y1 up to ym 
so you get this mesh you get a two dimensional mesh which uh, covers uh, which is the division of your original interval r original rectangle r now there are the step sizes which are b minus a upon n d minus c upon m you remember the formula for the uh, simpson's rule composite simpson uh, rule we are writing the double integral as this iterated integral and we are again going to approximate the integral c to d f of x y dy treating x as constant using the composite simpson's rule so we uh, obtain this integral which is there in the bracket we compute it using the composite simpson's rule that will give us some just like the multiple uh, trapezoidal rule we will get some functions of x and we will evaluate each of those again integrals using the simpson's rule for x that's what we are going to do so sit tight what we have is that y j's are c plus j k for each j going from 0 to m and then this integral 0 to d f of x y dy remember we are going to integrate with respect to y first this becomes this particular this it gives you this formula so you have k by 3 outside which is the step size and then you have f of x y naught which is the first point and f of x y m which is the last point those are coming with multiplicity is 1 those are coming with coefficient 1 all the intermediate even function values they are coming with multiplicity 2 here we have them and then the remaining odd values are coming with multiplicity 4 this is the composite simpson's rule for you and then you have some error of course okay so now when we are going to compute the double integration we will have to compute the integration of each of these terms say f of x comma yj or f of x comma y whatever yi for instance those are the things that we are going to count so the final integral is a sum of integral a b a to b f of x comma y j and now we are writing for x i similar to y j we write for x i for i going from 0 to n and we apply the composite simpson's rule to each f x comma y j where j goes from 0 to m and we are going to write the final answer in the next page but it's going to have a similar form. There will be something with coefficient 1, something with coefficient 2 for each of them and something with coefficient 4 and again something with coefficient 1. Okay. So the approximate formula for the double integral is hk by 9 because h by 3 and k by 3 that comes out anyway. And this is f of the here you are putting y naught is constant. We are integrating the fun function. So if you go back, we had f of x comma y naught. We are integrating this function with respect to x from a to b. And this is the answer. So I have put it in the black color. Uh, excuse me. I have put it in the blue color. So we have f of x naught, y naught, x and y naught. Those are the two endpoints which are coming with multiplicity is 1. The remaining even x to j they come with multiplicity is 2 x to i they are coming with multiplicity 2 and all the odd x to i minus 1 are coming with multiplicity is 4 okay here these are the ones where y to j is fixed so the even y is fixed other than the y naught and y uh, m and these we have put in a different color and uh, we have a similar j going from 1 to m by 2 minus 1 j going from 1 to because here we are also varying over j and exactly what we have done we have f of x naught then f of x to i which is which are again there and i is going from the same 1 to n by 2 minus 1 which is what we had for y naught then four times f of odd x's i going from 1 to n by 2 same to what we had for y naught and finally f of xn j going from 1 to m by 2 minus 1 so for each y to j 
we are doing the same thing. We are using the uh, since composite Simpson's rule for each y to j. But since they are all uh, can be summed using the variable j, we put them all together. And for remember, for the y to j's other than the endpoints, you have already the coefficient two, which is coming out here. Okay. Then this is with coefficient four. These are the odd y's. So you have y. 2j minus 1. So you have x0 y 2j minus 1, which comes with coefficient 4. Even x is an odd wise. There is a coefficient 2 here, and then there is a coefficient 4 outside. Then the odd x is an odd wise, and then now the coefficient for this together is going to be 16. And then the final xn with the odd y that comes with just the coefficient 4. And in the end, you are going to do it for ym. So that's all. Again, meaning it may look scary, but if you really sit down and write it, maybe for uh, some j equal to 4 and i equal to 2 or something, you will see that it's really not much. You can actually write it uh, using a picture. You can draw the rectangle, divide the rectangle into some um, sub intervals or sub rectangles and then you have the constants for each of the corner points of the sub rectangles so let's do an example and see whether this is really easy or this is not so easy so what we are going to do is that we are going to use composite simpson's rule with n equal to 4 m equal to 2 and we want to approximate this particular integration which is integration 1.4 to 2 1 to 1.5 the natural logarithm of x plus 2y dy dx. This is what we want to do. So I have written it as dy dx and therefore what it means is that this 1 to 1.5, this is these are the limits for the y part. And then the limits for the x part are 1.4 to 2. This is something which we all understand. Okay, so I will not be putting the brackets and so on. Now the step sizes that can be easily uh, understood, we have n, which is, uh, remember I told you for the x part, it is 1.4 to 2. And there, there the uh, step size is the b minus a upon n. So b minus a upon n is coming to be 0 0.15 here. Similarly, d minus c upon m, that comes to 0 0.25. And the region, so we are going to also use uh, that picture, the picture of rectangles that I have been talking about. So I'm going to show you that region of integration in the next slides with the nodes, which are going to be sub intervals, uh, the corner points of the sub rectangles for various i's and j's. And we will also see the coefficients for each of those um, corner points. So here is the picture. We have 1.4 to 2, which is the x called uh, x uh, limits, and the y limits are 1 to 1.5. And here we have so there are total eight sub rectangles, and uh, so total you have 5 in plus 5 plus 5, so 15 uh, points, 15 nodes. So the x i and y j together become because 5 into 3, so you get 15 nodes, and there are various coefficients. So, using this, the final approximation then comes out to be, this is the h up into k upon 9, and then summation i going from 0 to 4, j going from 0 to 2, w, i, j. Remember, w, i, j are those coefficients which we have seen in this picture. So, for each of them, we will multiply by the corresponding coefficient w, i, j to the value f of x, i, y, j, which is ln x, i, 2, y, j. And I will just write the final answer here, which is 0 0.42955 2438. So in the 10 digit representation, it turns out to be this. Whereas if you really compute the integral, that value turns out to be 0 0.42955, correct for the first five digits. And then the next five digits are 45265. So here instead of 45265, we had Obtained 24,387. So if you uh, subtract the obtained value from the actual value, the error turns out to be 2.1 into 10 power minus 6. 
so we know that indeed the simpson's rule gives you a much better answer you can also try this with the multiple trapezoidal rule and see that the error will be slightly worse but what is the error what what is the error predicted by the error formula so the error formula for this we have not derived it but i will just tell you that the error formula is this particular formula which is minus of d minus c b minus a upon 180 and inside you have h power 4 h is the step size for the x part h power 4 the fourth partial derivative of the function with respect to x evaluated at some eta bar mu bar plus k power 4 fourth partial derivative of the function with respect to y evaluated at some eta hat mu hat so these eta bar mu bar and eta hat mu bar mu hat these are some points in our rectangle we don't know what those points are but at some points these uh, fourth partial derivatives are computed you take their sum with the coefficients h power 4 and k power 4 respectively and then you multiply by this number outside which is minus of d minus c b minus c upon 180 this is the error formula so if you apply this error formula in the example that we have done just now then it will give you that mod e remember our error typically we always compute it in terms of the modulus value so that we can have a nice less than or equal to part this is less than or equal to 0.5 which is d minus c and 0.6 which is b minus a upon 180 0.15 power 4 which is the h power 4 and then we have k power 4 also and since we have put a less than or equal to sign what we are going to do is that we don't know what eta bar mu bar is so we will try to get an upper bound by computing the partial fourth derivative at all points and take taking the maximum over the whole uh, rectangle r and uh, we do the same thing here with respect to y and again take the maximum over that so i will again give you the final answer to be 4.72 into 10 power minus 6 so the error predicted by the formula is slightly bigger because it talks about the maximum value of the partial derivatives whereas the eta bar mu bar and eta hat mu hat may give you a smaller value of the fourth partial derivative and therefore the actual error is indeed smaller you know meaning after all mod e is supposed to be less than or equal to this so there is no wonder that our 2.1 into 10 power minus 6 is less than or equal to 4.72 into 10 power minus 6 so the multiple integration using our composite new simpson's or trapezoidal rules are not difficult they can be applied to triple integration the gaussian quadrature method can also be applied to um, multiple integrations but we will not do that in the next lecture what we are going to do is to try and apply some of these numerical techniques to solving the improper integrals so what are improper integrals we will see what those are in our next lecture and also see some methods to solve them so i have we stop at this point here and uh, see you in our next lecture thank you